So leading up to the muscle disuse atrophy, can you talk about what that is? What are some of the mechanisms underlying it? You know, and in what circumstances can it be actually life-threatening? Sure. So I think, um, you know, most people who've had a cast or a brace um, on their arm, you know, you, you, you apply it. And then after six weeks, you get it cut off. And, you know, if you're like me, afterwards, afterwards you've got a skinny, hairy arm and you've got a quite an obvious loss of, of muscle there and also muscle strength. And it's, it's a point of, con- well, maybe not as a point of contention anymore, but, you know, one of the reasons that we think that occurs is because there's a reduction in the rate at which we create new muscle proteins in the form of pro- muscle protein synthesis. Um, so when you reduce muscle protein synthesis in both the fasted and in response to amino acids, it leads to a negative balance of skeletal muscle over time that kind of reduces the size of muscle that you have. So, you know, for younger folks, it's probably, you know, it's not nice to have a cast or to have an injury, but we can recover from, I say we, but generally the younger folks can recover from that um, relatively quickly with some, you know, rehabilitation of exercise and adequate nutrition. I think it becomes a little bit more of a problem as you get older, uh, particularly for older adults and particularly for older adults who are going into surgery or who've had surgery. Because, you know, that rapid loss of muscle um, may not always come back to baseline in the older folks. And I think, you know, I've, I've heard this before on one of your podcasts, I believe with Stu, is that, you know, when uh, it's called the catabolic crisis model that was coined by um, the late Doug Padden Jones and, and Kirk English. But essentially, if the more insults that older people have with those periods of inactivity um, and immobilization, they lose the muscle, it may not come back and then they lose a little bit more. And all of a sudden you reach... Um, a threshold beyond which, you know, you can't perform activities of daily living. The, you know, you just don't have that muscle or that mu- muscle mass or muscle strength to be able to perform things like going for a walk or going to the shops or being able to, you know, go to the bathroom independently. And essentially you lose those activities of of independent living, which is not really good um, for older people. And, and we also know that, you know, muscle strength in and of itself and to some degree muscle size is a predictor of uh, or cause mortality and disability. So losing muscle in those situations is not necessarily a good thing at all. So you mentioned something really important and in, in, you know, in the case of, you know, for me, um, it was quite educational that the loss of muscle protein or the decrease in muscle protein synthesis seems to be the major driver of this, you know, disuse, muscle disuse atrophy. Yeah. Why is, or is, let's say you could take in an optimal amount of essential amino acids that are required to sure. uh, stimulate muscle protein synthesis. Is that enough to prevent protein, uh, prevent muscle disuse atrophy? And if not, like why? No, it, it, it's not. Uh, I think the, the main message here is that you really can't out nutrition, physical inactivity or, or mobilization. It can mitigate the decline. So it could take the edge off. So increasing the overall dose and quality of protein nutrition, particularly the essential amino acids, may protect against the declines to some degree, but it's never going to completely, um, you know, abate the decline. It's only going to be partially protective. And one of those, we still don't really know the reasons as to what we know that there's a decline in protein synthesis, but we don't know at the molecular level exactly why it is that the body can't mount that adequate protein synthetic response to feeding. And it's also down in in the fasted state as well. So simply consuming higher amounts of essential amino acids may be partially protective. And there's a particularly leucine and the branch chain amino acid leucine and essentials. It may be partially protective against the declines in muscle mass, um, but it's not entirely effective. And it certainly isn't entirely effective at protecting against the declines in strength, which is oftentimes what we really care about. So it's, you know, but the issue there is, you know, you can, if, if you can certainly perform some kinds of contraction or activity, if, if, if you're sick or you're unwell to some degree, but if you're going through surgery and you're lying in a hospital bed and you're really sick or you're in ICU, for example, you know, you're not going to be performing contraction there. The nutrition is the only real way that we can target, um, protecting that decline in muscle mass. But again, to answer your question, it's only partially protective. It, it doesn't completely blockade or block the, uh, declines in mass. 